Now in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Flash Forge Artemis. Uh, this is one of the easiest 3D printers that we set up and it looks great and it could fit in any part of your home, especially if you don't have a dedicated space. Now, let's go ahead and check it out. Now the Flash Forge Artemis has a 195 by 190 by 200 millimeter print area. Uh, it can get hot, which is really important because it's going to give you a lot of flexibility when it comes to printing. Uh, the, the nozzle can get all the way up to 260C and the bed can go up to 110C. Now this is going to come with two print surfaces, a glass print surface and a PEI build plate that you can install, which is what I chose. Um, I took off the bed and immediately went with the PEI because I like the flexibility and I like that I don't have to uh, really sh uh, scrape anything off. It comes with three nozzles, a 0.4, a 0.3, and a 0.6. Uh, print speeds anywhere from 50 to 180 uh, millimeters per second. And because of that printing temperature, it's going to be able to support ABS, HIPS, PLA, PTG, TPU, 95A. So it's going to give you a lot of flexibility when it comes to printing material. It also has power loss recovery, which means that if you lose power, it will continue where it left off, which is also going to save, especially if you have a print that's been going for multiple hours, if not multiple days. It can happen. Uh, filament runout sensor, which is also important because if it runs out, you want to keep on going and not lose your print. USB and Wi-Fi printing, right? So you can connect the USB and you can print, or you can use FlashForge's app to directly through the network send the print, which is, okay, something super spectacular. And for those of you who just don't know a lot about 3D printing, it comes with two rolls of filament. You heard me right, two rolls. It has a black roll and a white roll that's going to give you enough to print, experiment, and fall in love with 3D printing. Let's go ahead and check it out. Now, guys, this is the FlashForge Artemis. Uh, now, we've reviewed a lot of FlashForge products on the channel before, and I have to say that, you know, one of the things that I'm really delighted about this brand is the overall quality of the printers. They're very, very quiet. They look like appliances. They fit in the home. Uh, and this is something that's really important to me, especially, uh, and my friends who may not have dedicated spaces for 3D printing. This could fit well in the home. And actually, Nelda, when she saw this, she said, yeah, I can see that being left in the house as opposed to having to go to a dedicated space. So great looking printer. And again, something that is ultra quiet and that you could use in your home. So let's talk about some of the specs that we've, that we've been covering. Now, first of all, you have a print bed area of 195 by 190 by 200 millimeters. So you're going to have a, a decent print area right there that you can really, really work with. And uh, in addition to that, you also have um, some really good temperatures from this uh, specific nozzle set. So first of all, from a nozzle, you're going to be able to reach temperatures of 260 C. Uh, the benefit of something like that is the fact that you're going to be able to print a lot of different materials. The bed goes to 110 C and then it has right now a PEI sheet, which we're going to take a look at really uh, closely in a second. But the one thing I'll highlight about it is that it actually comes with two print surfaces. It ha comes with this glass surface that you see right here. Right? This is the one that, that it had when I, when I first got it. But then what I chose was to kind of like switch it to the PEI sheet. I prefer PEI sheets right, versus something like this, even though this comes out really nice and the print surfaces are really, uh, I think, smooth. Uh, I don't like glue sticks. I prefer just to print directly on the sheets. Uh, so having a PEI sheet makes it really flexible, and I love the fact that it came uh, with it both. So that is really nice. You do have then print nozzle of 0.4, but then it comes with a 3 and a 6. So you have multiple nozzles. Print speeds are anywhere from 50 to 180 millimeters. Uh, because of the temperature, you're going to be able to run ABS, HIPS, PLA, PETG, TPU95. has power loss recovery, which is really cool. Filament runout sensor, USB, Wi-Fi. Uh, and it comes with two rolls of filament that you'll see in a couple seconds. And the thing about it is that the Wi-Fi, uh, or just FlashForge in general, and I've, I'm starting to see other printers do this, but when you load a print to the FlashForge, it is going to also store it on board. So it retains it. So if you're using this in a classroom setting, in a home setting, if you're using this to run a business and you want to be able to run repeatable prints, once you run a good copy, one that has the right settings, one that has the right... I would say parameters, you're able to leave it on the printer and then just repeatedly run it over and over again. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at this printer and why I'm so excited about it. And the very first thing we're going to take a look at is the actual menuing system. So you can see how easy this is to, to use. So first of all, you do have USB, which is a form of uploading your prints. Uh, but then what you have here is, and we'll go back to the main menu, is uh, the ability to deliver things via Wi-Fi. You'll notice that I have the Wi-Fi is enabled and you have some other information telling you things that are going on with the printer, the print, current print temperature, current nozzle temperature. And then you have these real, a real simple menu that's gonna allow you know, somebody who is you know, first time 3D printer to actually start using this printer. 
so a couple things that are happening. You can actually go take a look at your controls. So this is going to allow your movement, loading and unloading filament, uh, doing your leveling, and then also going to your home position. You also have here your settings area, pretty standard stuff that you'd find here. Uh, this does uh, automatically update its firmware, so I'll let you know if there's any upgrades available. And then it has um, filament detection, as we spoke uh, earlier. And then what you're able to do is uh, really just go ahead, uh, go into info or go into build. The cool thing about the build process is that you can choose USB or disk. It has an onboard memory. And then these are all the things that I've been running on it, just testing things out. We'll look at the prints in a couple seconds. But you'll notice how it just stores them all. And you can just go ahead and just run those as, as you feel fit. We're going to go ahead and choose one so you can see how it would work when you do this uh, calibration cube while we're here. Uh, what you, all you have to do is once you have selected what you'd like to print, is just choose print. And then the printer is going to go through the process of warming up and getting ready to print. We'll watch as it does that. Now here at the very top, you're going to see that uh, we have uh, this PTF tube that is... Now at the top of the printer, as soon as you start your print to go, you're going to notice that you have a uh, your filament is loaded through this uh, Bowden tube, right? So this tube comes in, goes right into the printer, and your filament is loaded in this area. You can see uh, it has pretty decent cable management, so I like how everything's tucked away real nicely. And again, this is going to be a very simple printer because uh, all of the print movement happens uh, here from the very top. The bed is fixed, and it just goes up and down. Now. Getting closer to the bed surface, as we take a look at this, uh, you'll notice that you have these little areas right here that you can open things up and close. Uh, this was primarily used when we were using the glass. So this came with this sheet right here, which was the, the glass uh, print surface. We removed it. I actually prefer this. And I prefer this because if I want to remove a print, right, and I'm going to go ahead and open this up right here a little bit, um, I'm able to do this really easily. And you'll notice that it has this uh, magnetic material, this PEI sheet, has a smooth surface on one side and then it has a rough surface on the other. And it makes it really easy for things to uh, really stick on this. So I like uh, how this works. So I'm able just to lift really easily and then just take things off. There is a magnet that comes with this. So under here, I actually uh, laid a magnet sheet that helps you with the print. Right. So again, this is just going to go up and down and the print head is going to cover uh, the surface right here. Things stick really nicely. Now, the printer does come with two rolls of filament. So you can see uh, one right here uh, and it comes with two. Right. One of them is black and the other is white. We were using the white for some of the models and then I switched things up. Um, I wanted to use some fancier stuff. So this is the black one. I like the fact that it comes in this airtight uh, kind of bag. So it's going to make sure that uh, you don't have to worry about dehydrating. Now. Uh, we'll take a look at the back and how it looks from the back, but in the back area, all you would have to do is load the filament and it has a really nice um, external filament mount uh, that allows you to just feed the filament in really easily. Now, before popping up to the back, I just wanted to show you what the initial print experience looks like. So what you'll see is it's going to kick off right now. So you can see how it has a, a light as well that you can turn on and off. And there it goes. And it's starting to print. And if you look at from the top area, this is what it looks like from the top. And again, this thing is super quiet, super quiet. Won't get in trouble at home having one of these, that's for sure. Now, in the back of the printer, this is where you actually load your filament. So we have filament coming up here. It goes into the filament sensor that you see here, and then it kind of loads um, into the printer. Now, to give you a sense of how quiet this printer is, uh, let's go ahead and put in a little sound meter here and we're just going to take a look at what the normal noise is in the room and then we'll get it closer to the printer. So we're going to have right here and I'm going to stay quiet. Okay, now I'm going to get closer to the printer. That's pretty quiet. So very, very light fan noise. That's pretty much it. Now as this print job is going, I want to show you some of the prints that we ran on the Artemis. Uh, we've been seeing this guy uh, show up a lot on the internet. So we said, hey, why not? Let's go ahead and print him. And this is, uh, again, what he looks like. So uh, this skull was printed uh, using about 15% infill and there was no supports whatsoever. All right, so you can see how clean that is. This is with the white and you can see the kind of detail that we're talking about. Really, really nice detail. All right, and everything came out really, really clean. So this could be uh, mounted on something and uh, work out really nice. The other thing we did is we printed 
uh, one of these guys. Everybody's into these articulating um, little guys. So we wanted to see how, you know, a silk filament would do because let's face it, silk is not a forgiving uh, filament type. A lot of the defects come through. Now, if we take a look at what he looks like right there, you can see there is a lot of detail, right? And this is a print in place, so no supports. He did a really nice job. Clean, clean, clean. If you look at that first layer, very, very clean first layer. That texture that you see there is because of the PEI sheet, but works really nicely. We then, uh, you know, what I love about 3D printing is uh, I can't find my square. So what I ended up doing is printing a square. So you can see what that looks like right there. And that was a square that we printed. Really, really love the way this turned out. Uh, warped a little bit right here. Uh, this is probably something that I did. Not so much what the printer did, but we'll flip it on this so you can see how clean this is. And it is, you know, if we were to, I don't know, we'd have to put it on something maybe right here. It is, it is flat, right? So it is flat. And as I was doing some testing on some other things that I've been working on, I needed a square, so I got a square printed. Uh, we also did something in vase mode. I just want to show you um, how gorgeous this is. Take a look at that. Oh my God. Isn't that beautiful? You can make, you know, just accessories for your home. Check that out. Really nice. Very, very thin. And then just so, so, so clean. Really like that. Now, We'll go ahead and bring our caliper into shot right here for a second. Uh, here was a cube that we printed just to see uh, the overall quality. And you can see how things look right there. So, you know, one of the things we like to look at is what are the dimensions like? So that's 19.98, right? We'll go ahead and look at this one right here. 20, just a little bit over, right? And then we'll do, we'll look at this one right here, I think. Yeah, that's the side that we're still missing. 1997. Um, so that's how you can see uh, the overall tolerance as I saw. Something a little bit here going on that we could probably clean up. By the way, I've been using standard, standard Flash Forge uh, print settings. Nothing extra, no tweaking, everything out of the box, which is like I like to see. And, and I do these tests in that fashion because most of us, when we get a printer, we just want it to go and work right off the bat. And that's what I wanted to test. I wanted to test what would be the consumer experience of receiving this product, plugging it in, powering on, and if you have kids, they just want to see it print. So that's what we've been doing. You can improve all these prints with tuning and tweaking of your profile, but hey, let's, let's test it like, um, like you know, someone who is new to 3D printing. So that's what I've been doing here, and I'm sure we can improve all those prints. So guys, that wraps up our review of the Flash Forge Artemis. See you in the next one.